very recently I've been doing a lot of horror composites and one of the main things within them is the hair and that's what we're going to look at today the finishing touches for hair and simple ways that you can use to create and just embellish the finishing touches of your image it's probably the wrong time of year to be doing horror composites but it just so happens that that's a series of films that I am currently viewing. Plus it's one of the things I'd love to do, I'd love to be able to create a poster for a movie. It's just one thing I would love to be able to do. But let's get back to this week's video and thank you again for tuning back into the channel. In the video this week, we're going to look, be looking at the finishing touches to hair. And I'm just going to show you the process that sometimes I go through when I am doing this. And in particular, this is the process I used before I had a pen tablet or a screen display. Creating hair with a pen tablet or a screen display is so more fluid than trying to draw with a mouse. And the technique we'll be looking at today, I still employ, even although I do use a pen tablet and a screen display, I still use this because it yields some really, really nice effects and you get some really nice finishing touches with it. So without further ado, I'm going to dive in to this week's video. So this image here, although in the last one I did edit the hair as well, this image here is probably a better example of how to create or add more hair to give more dimension to the image. If I turn that one off and I also turn that off, that's what I was working with. And then as you can see, we add in this, which gives us the depth to the hair. And then we add in the finer details at the front just to give it that punch. So I'm going to break this down, but what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can create this form of hair, or these fine details of hair, if you don't have access to a pen tablet. Because as you know, Photoshop, drawing with a mouse, it's not ergonomically friendly and it can be a real pain. And what we'll do is we'll dive into another image so that perhaps it shows up better for you. If you just watch this area here, you will see subtle strands of hair appearing. Now I've got quite a few in here. I've, I've doubled up the layer and then compressed it. But you can see where it is. Let me show you how I created them. First thing I'm going to do is go to the brush and I am going to select hard round brush at one pixel. That's just so that I've got a fine hair. I'm going to take the pen tool I'm just going to draw it through the face to let you see the process. So ensure that your settings are at rubber band and that way it's just a flow that you're creating. So if I click once there, click and hold, click and hold, click and hold, click and hold. So you get the idea there. So once you are at this point, hold down control, go up to leave this top point, but these other points here, with control held down, select them. Then hold shift and alt, and then, the in my case, the right arrow key. And you see it's duplicated it. So we're going to leave that at that. So I'm then going to repeat the process. Hold down control, select the bottom points, shift, alt, and in this case, the right arrow key. But now we're going to make a few changes to it. And what I'm going to do to make the changes is use Control or Command and T just to free transform it. So we've got that there. And I can squash it if I want. I can move it out, bring it in there. So you're looking to see how you can make a pattern of hair look as natural as possible. So let's just do that. That's fine. That'll do for the purposes of this exercise. Just click OK. Right, with the pen tool selected, right click, stroke subpaths. Now we've already got the brush set. One pixel, full hardness. 
brush. First time I'm going to do this, I'm going to take it off, uncheck, simulate pressure. Click OK. Then I'm going to hit the backspace key twice. One, two, three, three times. So you can see the hair there that we have just created. And I can just grab that. I have auto select off so that I'm only working with this. So I can drop that in there and we've got a nice curl of hair. Nice sweep of the hair. But it doesn't have a fade. So I'm going to step this back. One, two, three, four, five. So that's me back to, I'm just about to stroke the path. Select the pen tool, right click, stroke sub paths, simulate pressure. Click OK. So that now has a pressure added to it as well. So we'll hit the backspace key. Do you see how it fades away now? So we've got a fade up here and we have a fade down here, which now allows us to move this around. See that? And I can add wisps of hair. Now, if I wanted to double this up and adjust it, it's just simply Command and J or Control and J. And I'll just keep doing it so that you can see it appearing. So there, we've got quite a few layers. Control and E, bring them all back down into one layer. So that's it there. I am then going to move it and I can place that wherever I want. So that's one way of doing it if you don't have access to a pen tablet or a pen display screen. And you can actually just move them to wherever you want. You can see it really stands out now. I can go Control and T. I can make it blend in a tiny bit better. Again, I can double that one up as well. Just Control or Command and J and go in and warp it if I want. Edit transform, warp, and then I can pull that down and just place it around there, wherever I want it to be. So that's a nice clean way of creating just the wisps of hair that you often see in images or that perhaps you need to finish an image. Now, if it's just a single path that you need, you create a new layer, go into the pen tool, and I'm just going to follow something around here so that you can see it. So I'm just going to start there. I have the rubber band on. I'll just do that. And let's just make it as if it's messy around here. Now that kink in the hair probably wouldn't be like that. But right click in the path. Stroke path. Simulate pressure. Click OK. Then hit the backspace key and the backspace key. That's how soft it would be. I'm going to have to zoom in to show you that's how soft it is. So you can see it's still set for the colour that was there before. Now these are just finishing touches. These are not how I would do an entire head of hair. It's just finishing touches and perhaps you've had to cut out some hair or you want to emphasise some areas already in there and you don't have access to a pen tablet or a screen display that you can draw with. Again, colour with this one, we can simply go in and change that using any of the adjustment layers. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just lets you see how easy it is to create hair if you do not have access to a pen tablet or a pen display. I highly recommend it if you do a lot of compositing or even portraiture anything like that. This is a fantastic method to create just the finishing touches to your images. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.